Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In a previous video, I showed you how to run distributed training on the latest generation of Intel Xeon CPUs based on the Sapphire Rapids architecture. And we got a really good speed up. In this video, we're gonna use those CPUs again, but for inference this time. We'll start from a few NLP models, benchmark them on the previous generation of Intel CPUs based on the Ice Lake architecture. And then of course, we'll run the same tests on the new CPUs and we'll see what's what. We'll add our own optimum Intel library to the mix for extra performance. So get ready for some serious speed up. Let's get to work. To begin with, let's look at the test servers we're gonna use. Um, I'm gonna use a C6i EC2 instance. This one is based on the Ice Lake architecture. So that will give me my, uh, my baseline benchmark. And I'm going to use an R7iZ instance, which is based on the Sapphire Rapids architecture. Okay. At the time of recording, these are still in preview. Okay. They have the same size, 16XL. Uh, and I started from the same uh, AMI uh, to set them up. The setup itself is pretty simple. Uh, you'll find all the instructions in this uh, companion blog post, link in the video description but the, the steps are really simple uh, i'm installing torch the intel extension for pytorch which will bring all the hardware acceleration for those different chips i uh, will talk about the the new sapphire rapid stuff when we get there of course the transformers library and on the sapphire rapids instance i'm just adding optimum intel and we'll see why we want to do that okay Fine, uh, let's look at the code. Uh, we'll start, of course, with the uh, the Ice Lake instance. And the benchmark is pretty simple. I'm uh, starting from those three models. Let me zoom in a bit, maybe. Get rid of this, yes. Okay, uh, so starting from those three models, uh, Distilled Bird, Bird Bays, uh, Roberto Bays, okay. And I'm gonna create a sentiment analysis pipeline for those three models. Um, and I'm gonna run predictions on a short uh, customer review, as you can see here, uh, pretty simple, uh, 16 tokens or something, and a longer one. Okay, this one I think is uh, close to 128. Okay, and I'm gonna iterate on those and try to to you know measure something meaningful hopefully okay and so short sentence long sentence and then batching the short sentence and then batching the long sentence okay and doing this uh, for each of the models okay and the benchmark itself is very simple i'm warming up everything for 100 iterations and then i'm just literally uh uh, predicting a thousand times, okay, storing all the prediction times and returning the mean and the 99th percentile, okay. So that should give me, you know, a decent view of, of uh, you know, what's happening in, in real life. Short, uh, short uh, sequence, long sequence, uh, and then batching them uh, and looking at mean and percentile, okay. So we'll see how that goes. So we can just run this. It's gonna run for uh, for a minute or two, and uh, you know, I'll, let's let's keep this thing running for a minute, and then uh, I'll be back and we we'll look at the times. Okay. Okay. So after a few minutes, we have our results, and they're pretty close to the ones in the blog post. So let's look at those. Okay. So you want to focus on this one. Okay. The that gray area here. Okay. C sixteen I. And we see, um, you know, for a distilled bird, P99 is around five milliseconds. Um, and for bird, it's a little over 10. It's about the same for Roberta. And for longer sequences, um, we can't get single digit, uh, for, even for distilled bird, right? We see 11, 20, and about 20 again for. Uh, for Roberta and, and the numbers for the, the batched predictions are, are comparable. So not ugly, but uh, um, difficult to stay under the, the 10 millisecond mark. 
even with the smaller models. Okay, so now let's run the same test and um, uh, on the other instance. Okay, so let's let's do this here. And here we're actually running. Let me maybe close this. We're actually running the test twice. Uh, we're running it with the vanilla transformers pipeline, right? As you see here, exact same code. Okay, just a different instance. And then we use um, an optimum Intel pipeline. Okay, so the difference here is that we'll be able to leverage um, all of the hardware acceleration features present on those Sapphire Rapids instances, um, like AMX uh, and, uh, and BFLOAT 16 support. Okay, so if you want to be sure your instance actually has that, uh, you can just go and ls cpu and look at the flags and you should see those amx flags right you'll see all the avx 512 stuff that has been around for a long time but what's really new with sapphire rapids is that uh, advanced metrics extensions right which brings uh, new hardware registers two-dimensional registers that can be used for um, uh, matrix uh, multiply and accumulate. Okay, those are called the tile registers. And, uh, and so that uh, multiply and accumulate operation is available for, uh, for int 8 and it's available for BF16, okay? And if you're not so sure what BF16 is, here it is, okay? Uh, so we all know FP32, uh, we all know FP16. And the problem with FP16 is the exponent uh, is actually quite shorter and that can create uh, overflow issues when, um, when working with FP16. So uh, BFP16 uh, is, uh, has the same exponent size, 8 bits, so it can represent the same range of values as FP32. Obviously, we're with less granularity because it has less uh, significant bits. But at least the, the range of values we can cover is exactly the same. So that kind of removes the, uh, the overflow issue that you could see with FP16, right? So yeah, BF, uh, BF16 is, uh, is, is great for that. And it's also very fast thanks to this uh, AMX extension, okay? And to use this, as you can see, the only thing we need to do is um, create this uh, optimum Intel pipeline, make sure we pass the bfloat16 um, data type, and enable uh, the JIT, right? Uh, so that we can use you know, Torch script and all the, uh, all the underlying acceleration present in PyTorch as well, okay? And then the rest, of course, is the same, okay? So very simple. All right, let's run this and see what kind of speed up we get. All right, and it'll take a few minutes. Okay, so I'll see you there. So after a few minutes, we get our results. Again, they're really close to the ones in the post, so we'll look at that. Um, we can see switching from Ice Lake to uh, Sapphire Rapids, uh, per se, brings uh, some speed up. Um, this is uh, this is quite noticeable on. Uh, on this Tilbert, uh, where we go from you know 548 to 457, uh, less noticeable on the on the bigger models, but there is there is you know maybe a, let's say 20 30 percent improvement just with the new generation. But where we start hitting really sweet numbers is when we run the uh, optimum uh, Intel pipeline with uh, uh, BF16, right? Because now we see uh, we actually drop to very low numbers uh, and we're literally under two milliseconds uh, consistently for distilled BERT. Uh, for short sequences, we're under five for long sequences. And even with bigger models, uh, we're uh, extremely close to 10 milliseconds, even with longer sequences. And generally, you know, across the board, we see um, anywhere from let's say 55 to 65 percent latency reduction um, and you know that means uh, about a 3x speed up right which uh, is very very noticeable 
So this means even on CPU, uh, you can get you know low single digit uh, latency for uh, for distilled BERT, BERT, and Roberta for short sequences, and you can stay within 10 milliseconds for longer sequences, right? So that's um, that's a really good number. I mean, this used to be you know GPU territory, one millisecond prediction, two millisecond prediction. And you can do the same with uh, with a CPU, right? Which uh, which is just generally easier to work with, and uh, and easier to manage in your infrastructure. I'm sure you have plenty of CPU servers lying around. Well, now you can use them for inference. No need to go and grab um, um, expensive and you know difficult to manage, difficult to procure uh, GPU servers. Okay, but that's just me. All right, well, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. Uh, again, go and check out the blog. Um, you, can, you can see some, uh, some numbers, you can see the setup. And of course, the code is available and you can uh, replicate all of this yourself with your data and your models, okay? Well, that's it for today. I hope that was fun and informative. And until next time, keep rocking.